Back in November, the Dolphins lost their first game against the Jets. Can New York finish the sweep? The answer comes your way next on EA Sports. Well, we are about a $50 cab ride away from Midtown Manhattan at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford. A few moments ago, the crowd here was on their feet as their beloved Jets made their way out of the tunnel. They're ready to go. We're ready to go, and it should be a good one as those New York Jets get set to face off with the Miami Dolphins. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis and CD. You look at the Jets coming into play. They've got to be thinking, hey, we've got a good chance to be successful here running the football. No doubt about that because that has to be their mindset. It should be their mindset. This is one of the better rushing offenses in the league, and they're squaring off against a team that's not at all strong on the other side of the ball. So this could be one where we see this offense try to impose their will through the trenches, and in fact, they should. scoreboard 0-0 as the offense gets ready to take over the football. Throwing on first down. Cobb. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing again. Come. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Jalen Phillips, he's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. Now a pass hauled in downfield, and they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. It's a big play that time by the Jets. Now that one hurts defensively. They force them into third and long, had the advantage, yet they give up the big play right there. Yeah, their offense was already warming up on the sideline, ready to come out. So much for that three and out. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. But from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that. yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where a play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, got that dagger, got that play, and just finish him off right now, because I think they'd love to gain that big advantage early. They'll run. This is Jonathan Taylor, and he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. And he's got a man, Corey Davis. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 18. And he's top five in the league in terms of receiving yardage because it plays like that. What have you seen from him on film that you like so much? Well, I'll strip away everything else and get to what we call the moment of truth. When the ball's arriving and there's a defender there, he just comes down with the ball. He competes and takes it away. Great hands, great ability to finish the catch. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. you got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. Second and ten. Hey, tight, tight down, tight down. There you go. To throw again. Cobb. And yeah, this will be caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. Michael Pittman, his third touchdown now. Jets 
offense coming up now to start their next drive. And they, on paper, Charles, no doubt they have the edge in this one. They are sitting with the AFC elite, and on the other side, they're down toward the bottom of the AFC. But you know what they say, especially at this point in the season, watch out for a trap game. And in doing so, I would take my game plan and condense it. I would rely on my fundamentals, the fact that my players are probably just better, and not try and do too much, do just enough to win the game. And on the other side of the field, I'm doing everything. Every trick play I can think of, every different formation, you name it, I'm throwing it at them in order to try and get the upset win. On first and 10, Cobb. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. On the draw is Taylor. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. To throw on third down, Cobb. And he will find Davis, that's complete. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. That's a let down defensively because they had him stacked up third and long, and you know their thought process had to be. Just make the tackle in front of the sticks and force the three. Instead, they allowed him room to run, and now they're facing first and goal, looking to regroup. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Looking to throw. Cobb. And that is pulled in by Herndon for a Jets touchdown. Chris Herndon. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Jets are going to add on to their lead. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like based on coverage. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. And he'll have this pass the 30. Brandon, after last week, we went over 200 yards. Looks like the hot tub, cold tub, whatever he did, it worked pretty well. Much chatter about that performance, rightfully so. AFC Offensive Player of the Week. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Two minutes to play, first half, it's 14 to nothing. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Now a give to Taylor. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's run down. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. To throw on second down, Cobb. Finding Herndon here on the completion. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 22-yard line. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. Off the play fake, Cobb. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. Got a man, it's caught. Touchdown on Jets. Tyreek Hill with his 16th touchdown of the year. And the Jets will extend their lead. 
So simple math here in the first half. They've had three drives offensively, and they have scored every time, and they've got the lead. Well, whenever we talk about adjustments, we usually talk about an offense making adjustments, right? This is all about the defense. They've got... So the offense set to take the field here. They will have the football with less than a minute to go in the first half. They'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. So we've come upon halftime here in week 17. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. We'll start up at Highmark Stadium just outside of Buffalo. And it's the Browns who are out on top. Baker Mayfield with a couple of touchdown passes. From there, we head to the Big Easy to check on the Saints at home in the Superdome. And they've got the lead in that ball game over the 49ers as that one's gone to the half. Alvin Kamara, a touchdown run in that first half. Lastly, let's motor up to the Motor City. See what's happening with the Lions at home at Ford Field. And it's the visiting Minnesota Vikings who have the lead in that one at halftime. Dalvin Cook, a touchdown run in that first half. With that, let's get a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for Miami. And not much went right in those first two quarters. You can see the numbers on the ground there. Not a whole lot to write home about so far. Meanwhile, for the Jets, you get a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And whatever they've done, it's worked as they have the lead through two quarters of play. Both teams making their final adjustments for the second half to come. And to bring the action your way, we go back to MetLife Stadium and Brandon God. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. The final two quarters of the NFL regular season are upon us as the second half of Week 17 is underway. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so bringing it out of the end zone proves... First down, Cobb. He will find Davis on the left side complete. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Back to throw now on second and ten. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Jalen Phillips able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Uncorks one for Davis. And oh, that's going to wind up incomplete. Nearly their first pick of the game, but it does bring up fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And this will be taken at the 13. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And it'll be Dolphin football. Now we... So now this offense will take over, and they will have the football at their own 20-yard line. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he's got Rome. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 58 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. 
So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've run the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. And he had to fight that time. Ran through one tackle, but ultimately he's only going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and 10. Escaping the pressure right. And going deep for Hill. And at the seven yard line, the catch is made. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. It's a big play there for the Jets on third down. In our pregame meeting, all they talked about was keeping him hemmed in and wanting him to make his throws from the pocket because they knew he was pretty dangerous if he got outside, and he just showed it right there. Pretty good arm, too. They'll run here with Taylor. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. He's hit pay dirt a lot this year, but not that time. Yeah, I'm tracking right there with you. You're exactly right. He's bound the end zone plenty of times. No way I can find any fault with the call. He may not have scored there, but of course you're gonna give it to him. That's to Davis, he's got it. Touchdown, New York. Corey Davis, his 11th touchdown of the year. And the Jets find a way to stretch their lead. You have fun with this one, partner? Oh, yeah, I am. Mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about it. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And that last drive, a long drive. But not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. And these two division rivals, a couple of late games on the schedule this year. Their first meeting, you might remember, was back in week 10. And it was the Jets winning on the road. So they're looking to finish off the sweep here now at MetLife Stadium. Here's Taylor. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off a game. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Now a handoff, Taylor with it. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. 97 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Off play action, Cobb. Out right here to Herndon. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 15-yard line. Tell you what, Martin, the way he's been slinging it in this one, I think he should be ticketed for a baseball cap and a set of headphones for the next drive. He's been absolutely sensational. But one thing we've both learned about quarterbacks in this league, they often stay on the field longer than you expect. 
Emmanuel Agba there on the stop. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. Well, we're beyond the tone setting right now. This guy's been the bell cow all day, and they'll continue to rely on him to move the chains, drain the clock, and lead his team. They'll look to run with Taylor. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. Back to throw. Cobb. And this will be caught. And the carnage continues. It's another touchdown. So don't care if I break one of our rules, partner, which is to never call a game over until it's over. Because it certainly feels like it's over after that drive. Yeah, that was spirit crushing, wasn't it? And now you can you just kind of felt the air go out of the balloon. Yeah, they were fighting so hard to stay in there, and they knew they had to stop them on that drive. But when they were unable to, I, I think you're exactly So it's a victory here for the New York Jets. Well, I tell you what, Charles, this might be about as good as it gets. They were incredible. Yeah, offense was in fine form. The defense threw the shutout at them. I think they worked in concert together. What I like about the offense was they held the ball pretty well. You know, time of possession, exactly what they were looking for in this one. And that helped out their defense. Didn't have to be out there the entire time. So when you do that and you're out there fresh playing, off a little extra spring in your step, and it showed up in this one. They had a ton of spring in their step. Impressive victory. So for the Jets, they continue to show their playoff ready as they move to 13-3 with one game remaining. 